All right, guys, this one is going to be a long one. So do me a favor, get comfy, and buckle up. Yes, this video is going to be long, but in this video, I'm trying to teach you guys a lot of things. Maybe too many things. But if you will sit through the video, bear with me, you should learn something. About a year ago, one of my buddies sent me some Bloodwood, and I had never seen this stuff. I was unsure what to do with it, but I knew when I got it, I wanted to make a bowl out of it. And I knew I was just going to make a bowl and send it right back to him. Now, would an all Bloodwood bowl be super cool? Yes, of course. But I wanted to do something to make the Bloodwood kind of stand out, and all I had in the shop was ash. So I'm going to be doing a Blood and Ash Wood segmented bowl. Through the past few minutes, I've just been prepping the wood, getting it cut into the pieces that I want, um, and obviously now I'm prepping the wedgie sled. Here's one of those teachable moments I wanted to share with you guys. Everybody asks me for a specific measurement on my segments for a certain size ring. So here you go. This is from the blade, just under an inch, and it's about an inch from the opposite side of the blade. These measurements are gonna give you about a six inch ring and also a quick demo on how i use the sled you start with one fence and make your cut and then you bring it up to the next fence make your cut and then bring it back to the beginning fence no need for flipping your piece of wood and, and getting all complicated with it it's really a very simple jig I do sell this jig in my Etsy store if you guys are interested in it, but I will tell you guys, like I tell everybody else, make it yourself. You can just make it yourself and you will learn a lot from just the making process, but if you are constricted on time or just simply don't want to make it, you can always head to my Etsy and purchase one from me, handmade. And now that our First ring is done, I'm just gonna slap a rubber band on it and check for gaps and uh, imperfections. One thing I wish I would have done was switched out my blade to a 60 count blade because as you can see, I got a ton of tear out from this wood. But the ring still looks good, the joints look nice and tight, so I can proceed in cutting all the rest of the segments for the rest of the bowls. And this part can get tedious, so just make sure that you are counting each individual ring just to make sure that you have the right amount of segments in there and you should be good. And once I have my rings all ready to go, we're gonna start gluing them up. These are the tools of the trade. I always recommend having these in your arsenal for segmented turning. Of course, we've got glue, um, but you may be wondering what is the drill for and what are those other rings in the back so those rings are actually hose clamps and they work perfectly for circular clamping and all I have on my drill is just an attachment to make sure that it's really tight and what I'll do is I will tighten them just enough so that they're snug and then I'll take my little six ounce hammer and just hammer everything as flat as I can I want to try and get one side of the ring flat as flat as i possibly can it's going to make the sanding process a whole heck of a lot easier and of course once everything's flat then you can go back and re-tighten your clamp and really crank down on that thing to make sure that all the joints are nice and tight also another piece of advice you can never have too much glue always use more glue than you think you need moving on to the most stressful and quote unquote fun part of the build, I am going to be doing a segmented ash base for these bowls. Why am I making it sound like it's not going to be fun? 
because segmented bases are notoriously difficult for segmented turners and they are also very prone to splitting and cracking. But what I did was I took my ring, I measured my ring and cut that diameter in half. So if it was a six inch ring, you would want a three inch board for your segments. That way when you put the two tips of the three inch segments together, you get a six inch round. Now it's gonna be a little hard to get this three inch board in between those fences, obviously. So here's a little trick that I do. I take my wedgie that I use to set up my sled and I just push it forward. Push it down towards the base where it's obviously wider and then you can reclamp it down and that will allow you to get your wider boards into the sled. Easy cheesy lemon peasy. So now we get to set up our stop block and our saw for actually cutting these pie shaped segments. You would think I had some sort of measuring system or way to figure it out quickly, but I don't. Come on guys, you know me. It's all trial and error. So what I did was I made one first angled cut and then I brought it into my sled and flipped it so I can see basically where the blade is going to be. You want that blade to be cutting just, well, not like that. You could see I basically cut off the tip of that pie shape and I can bring it up to my piece of wood to measure it and you can see it comes up short. So now I can readjust. Um, I believe I need to scoop my piece of wood further past the blade and that'll give me a better cut. Again, this is where it would be really nice to have a 60 count blade. I don't know why I didn't switch it out. But we made our adjustments and let's see how we do. There, that is perfect. You can see I didn't cut off the tip. When that blade came through, it looked perfect. Measure it up against my piece of wood and I can tell I'm good to go. And I was setting my stop block every time I made my test cuts. So when I actually got to a size or distance from the blade that I liked, I didn't have to guess on my stop block. My stop block was already set up because I was adjusting my stop block while I was making these test cuts. But we got all 24 pieces cut and now we can actually slap a rubber band on there and see how we did you can see there's that hole in the middle that's where that 60 tooth count blade would have come in handy it wouldn't have just shredded all of the tips and sides to this bottom oh but we're not done yet uh i feel like there was a gap in this and so i slapped on the actual clamping method so i could really see what it would look like all clamped down and a trick I like to use is just to put it up to a light and boom, you can see where the gaps are. That's not good. It's not the worst because I know that once I add glue to every single piece of that, those gaps will most probably close up. So I continue to move forward with it. But there is a trick a lot of segmented turners do, which is this. When they are gluing up their segmented base, they put two... Usually it's dowels. I didn't have any dowels. I had pencils, but they put two dowels in between them. So that way they can sand the middle parts flat and glue them up from there and have a nice tight base. I highly recommend not using pencils for this. The pencils are just so soft that they ended up cracking under the pressure of the clamp. So what I ended up doing was just sticking a thin piece of wood in between everything and it worked basically just the same. But with those bases in the clamps and the rings in the clamps, we can get to the feature ring of these bowls. I decided to glue up two of the pieces together, one ash, one bloodwood, and I'm going to make a checkered pattern basically in the bowl. This is like a really simple feature ring idea you can do 
it really adds some class to the bowl, I think, and it just makes it a lot more interesting. Of course, you can have a lot of fun with feature rings and you can do all sorts of patterns and stuff. Um, maybe I'll do another video on some, but for now, this is probably one of my favorite ways to do feature rings. It just looks so cool when it's done. And now that that's done, we can start flattening our rings and assembling our bowl. This method I really enjoy. I'm using some double-sided stick tape from x -Fasten. This is the reason why I said to make your rings as flat as possible in the glue up. Because I took the time to make my rings flat, I don't have to sand one side in order to get them to stick to this board. Now, of course, there are a lot of ways to sand and flatten your rings to get them ready for glue up, but this is my preferred method because I have it. And that is the drum sander. Setting these rings this way through the drum sander, it's quick, the dust collection's awesome, and I am assured that all of my rings will come out the same thickness. Once I've run one side through the drum sander, I can then take all the rings off and I have a flat side to put in the drum sander and I can flatten the other side of the rings. The thing I love about sanding the rings is you can really see when they're done how tight your gaps are on your segments and it's just really satisfying to see it when it's done and sanded and ready for its next glue up. Again, you don't need a drum sander to sand your rings. I just use it because it's quicker, it's easier, but you don't need it. Okay, now we're getting there. All of the rings are sanded flat and we can start to glue up our bowl. I like to glue up two rings at a time. I feel like if you do more than that, things just start to get shifty and move around too much and it's just not as precise so glue up how you will I do two rings at a time once I have my alignment set um, I kind of just let it sit for a little bit and I let the glue settle before I put any sort of clamping pressure on my rings once I feel like the glue is set decently I'll come in with some of these what are they called spring clamps Right, spring clamps. I'll put four spring clamps on there or five or six, it doesn't really matter, just to help hold everything into place. Then I can come back with some F-style clamps and really crank down on this thing to help me get a nice tight joint. And while those are drying, we can come back and work on our bases. Not gonna lie guys, Going into this with these bases, I already had the expectation that they weren't going to work, but I knew I had to try. This amount of gap in this base after this style of glue up is bad. You can see I'm recounting because it looks like I'm missing a whole piece, but I'm actually not. The glue up was just horrid. With this style glue up, you should have maybe a small gap, but the pieces should kind of look like they go together. Where with that one, they definitely didn't look like they go together. This one was a little bit better. You can see how much smaller that gap is, and I felt a lot better about that one. Either way, I was going to proceed. I am going to do the same method that I did with the rings and run these through the drum sander so I have a nice flat face. That way when I take them over to the disc sander for the actual flattening of the joint, everything should be parallel and I shouldn't have any sort of problems. Hey. 
And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I know that I did go back and actually fix that gap in the middle. I sanded it just a little bit more and it did come together really nicely. But you guys can see how this style of base is just, <laughs> it's a mess. It's, it's not easy. It's not for the fate of heart. I really would love to come up with a better way to get it done. I just haven't yet. But with everything come together, I am still going to continue on with this base and try and make it work. Man, this really is a fine dance of glue ups once you get into segmented turning. You learn to manage your time. While one thing is glued up and drying, you work on the next thing to glue up and dry and so on and so forth. And before you know it, you'll have yourself a nice little bowl. And that's all I'm doing while the bases are drying. I'm gluing up more parts of my bowl. And then while those bowls are drying, I can come back and see how the bases are doing. They of course need one more pass through the drum sander to make sure that they are good and flat and ready for my bowl. So that way we get nice joints on there. And that's the base, it's looking okay. So the ugly joinery has to be dealt with in the middle of this segmented base. And I thought I was pretty clever coming up with this solution. I am basically going to CNC out a perfect little pocket for an insert. I definitely could have done this on the lathe, but I'm obsessed with my CNC right now and I want to try everything on it. So here you go, pointless CNC. -ing. And of course, while I was at it and while it was on the CNC, I just took a minute to make this blank perfectly round. The idea behind it is to make a wooden puck to insert into it so that way I don't have to worry about the ugly joinery. I think it would look super nice if I could do it. This was a test piece of ash but I wanted to do it with bloodwood. Unfortunately I didn't have any more bloodwood. All I had was this canary wood but I figured this stuff is going to look just as good or make it look even nicer. With a slight chamfer on the bottom of these pucks, they are ready for insertion. With a little bit of glue, we can just slide this thing in there and mwah, beautiful. So as I'm sitting here getting ready to glue these in, I'm thinking how I'm going to carve this all out and basically with the bowl, I'm going to be carving it round on the inside and I'm going to be carving it deeper than this goes, which would then make these pointless because I will carve them all the way, essentially. And for the outside, I'm going to have to carve a recess for my jaws to hold on to these, which is going to be as deep as this is, which again means that these will be pointless. So, I'm kind of thinking I will just glue this up how it is and start turning it and then glue these in. Because I don't want to turn these away. I want these to be present in the final piece, but I don't, I can't guarantee that I won't turn them away if they're not in here. So, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to glue these up and then we can start turning them, I guess. I hope that made sense to everybody. I, um, I basically just jumped the gun on things and this is kind of where things for this segmented base start to go wrong. But we're all glued up and we are ready for turning.
Using cold jaws to start my segmented bowls is a serious game changer. If you don't have a set of cold jaws or just jaws in general, I highly recommend getting them. I will leave a link to a set that I believe is pretty good down below and you guys can check them out for yourself. So we're going to be starting with the bowl that I already have the inserts in. I'm doing that because I wanted to test it and see if I actually could turn this with the inserts in and also just to see how everything performs. With everything looking good, I am going to mark out my recess for my jaws so I can get this thing carved out. My biggest fear is that I will carve away the whole canary wood insert and therefore it would be a pointless little insert. And as you can see, I did exactly that. I carved away the whole thing, but I knew I could also re-carve in an insert for another canary inlay. Like I said, I should have just done this from the beginning. I should have just left the blank how it was, mounted it and carved in my own thing but like i also said before i'm obsessed with the cnc i've got a little bit of a problem i have no idea what's going on with this base i don't know why i gave it that weird sort of swoop up to the insert but i did and i guess that's just how it's gonna be Letting that thing dry, I can just start working on the outside of the bowl and sort of figuring out the shape of this thing. I love the way segmented bases look, and that's really why I wanted to try and do a segmented base for this bowl, because it just looks so good and goes along so well with the rest of the segmented rings. Now that I've got this base figured out, I'm gonna go back and carve out this insert and just get it nice and flat, making sure it just looks like it's part of the bowl. And with the bottom of the bowl figured out, I can start sanding it why do I sand it right now instead of later? I sand it now because it's easier than sanding it later. If I don't sand it now, after I'm done turning the rest of the bowl, I then have to flip it, sand it again, and then flip it, and then sand it again, and it just is extra steps. You might as well just sand it now and get it over with. Before I flip the bowl and do all that, I am going to turn the other bowl just the same way that I did the last bowl. It's just easier this way with my cold jaws set up. I don't have to go from cold jaws to regular jaws back to cold jaws back to regular jaws. Turn all of your bowl bottoms first and then switch out your cold jaws for your regular jaws. Unless of course you have two sets of jaws which is just the wood turner's dream. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick minute here. Um, so I just turned the bottom of the bowl, like you saw, and I'm about to turn the inside, but I'm very scared. Uh, basically, the inside here, if I can hold this one for a minute, the inside here is paper thin, and I want this bottom to be a round bottom bowl. Which basically means I have to carve this all the way down to where I initially planned to insert the puck. Basically, I'm going to turn this thing all the way down to where you can see the other side of this puck. I don't know how to do it. And I'm scared because if I can't make it work, I wasted a lot of time 
on this segmented bottom. We're gonna try it. I'm gonna turn just the inside part and see if I can make it work. If I can't, we are going to basically put this thing back on the coal jaws and turn away the bottom and make a whole new one. Alright, let's go. So I'm going to be focusing mostly on just the bottom of this bowl. I just want to get to a point with this bottom that I know it's going to work basically. And now I'm at a good point where I can start figuring out what to do with this puck. I'm not actually sure that I want to insert it or if I want to just carve this bottom all the way down. I am gonna start cutting a recess in the bottom of this bowl to insert the puck. But as you can see right here, I broke through to the other puck already. So now the question is, do I glue it? to the previous puck or do I just keep it where it's at? Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is um, proceed and I think I'm just gonna carve all the way down to that back piece and not insert the second piece that I had planned. I think that should work. I hope. I, I honestly don't know but I think from what I can tell on this thing, what I can tell with this, it looks like it should work. So I'm just gonna continue carving the, the bowl and hope it works. <laughs> At this point, I'm really trying not to let this bowl get the best of me. It's been a challenge already just putting it together and it would be a little heartbreaking if it didn't fully come together on my first try. But I did go into this turning knowing I might not succeed with it. And I am always willing to pivot when it comes to situations like this. I love that part of learning where I know I need to learn something and if I have to learn it the hard way, that's fine. But at least I am learning and bettering myself and really honing my skills. And I didn't give up just because I thought that this might not work. I pushed through it because I want to see if it will work. I want to see if I can make this technique for this segmented base work all right i think i'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow to finish this because the glue in here is still really wet um it just hasn't cured up yet and i think i'm gonna have better chances waiting for this glue to actually be toughened up so we will try this back tomorrow but I have hope. This thing is looking really cool, and as long as I don't screw up this bottom, it should work. So I'm gonna let this gear, and I'll be back at it tomorrow. Okay, next day, and uh, well, we have a little bit of a problem. There is a crack right here, and I didn't realize this until after I turned off the camera, but this piece in here is super thin. So there's the crack, and I can almost push my way through that base. So that's great. So we now have to flip this around, flip this guy around, and um, turn off the bottom. 
and I'm just gonna do a solid ash bottom <clears throat> on these. And I'm also gonna turn off this bottom too so they match. <sighs> really not something I wanted to do, but what am I gonna do? That being said, I am going to conclude this saga and I will do a new video on returning the bottom and stuff for this because I'm pretty burnt out on this video already. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope that some of the knowledge I gave you is actual knowledge. Be good, be safe, be happy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.